All right, uh, doing episode number eight of our bus ministry nuggets, and I'll be in Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 8. Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 8. Uh, Going to be talking about the emotion driven bus worker. The emotion driven bus worker. Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 8. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Uh, I, I like that passage of scripture there because it talks about uh, how our Lord. Jesus Christ, how he how he changeth not. He, he never changes. He is the same. The Bible teaches there he's the same yesterday and today and forever. Um, and we as Christians, we're to be like Christ. We're to be Christ-like. Uh, and that means that we shouldn't change either as far as uh, our, our motives and our objective and our service to the Lord. We should every day serve the Lord continuously moving forward. We should never turn back to this world. We should never uh, give up on serving the Lord. We should never throw in the towel. We should be just like the Lord Jesus Christ and be the same yesterday, today, and forever as far as when it comes to our service to the Lord and trying to reach people for the gospel. And when it comes to the bus ministry, uh, we need to be sold out to the Lord in the bus ministry. Uh, the Lord is counting on us uh, to, to to work that bus route, to, to go out and knock on doors and, the, and pass out gospel tracts and to be a witness uh, and invite boys and girls and men and women uh, to come into the house of God. Uh, and so we need to be uh, focused in on what God would have us to do and not let our emotions drive us. Um, Jesus never wavered uh, on his mission. When, when God sent him to this earth, Jesus Christ, when he started his earthly ministry, he never wavered never wavered on what God would have him do. He never wavered on God's will, but except he fulfilled God's will. He fulfilled God's will uh, for his his life here on this earth. Uh, and we're to be the same way. Most Christians today, most Christians serve or don't serve uh, based upon their emotions. Uh, when everything's going good in their life and and uh, and, and, and churches, uh, for some people, it's new to them and it's exciting, so they want to get involved and uh, or, or there's a new ministry. Maybe you're just starting the bus route uh, in your church and it's something new and exciting. And so, yeah, we're all about it. Uh, but then once you put in time and, uh, and you get years down the line, uh, you see many of them pull out. Uh, and, and, and that's that way in every church, in every bus ministry. Uh, you'll have people that have those flashes of emotions where they there was a couple good services and, and they just got excited and it's just pure emotion. And they say, I want to get involved. And then they get involved and then they get out. Uh, and we see that time and time and time again. Most Christians serve or don't serve uh, based upon their emotions. Many of them, they have the mindset of, well, when I feel like it. Um, the bus ministry uh, is is an all the time thing. Uh, you know, we have soul winning visitation. Our bus ministry, our bus visitation, every Saturday, every Saturday. There's 52 Saturdays in a year. We go 52 Saturdays each year to go and invite people to church to visit our bus kids to encourage them uh, and encourage them to come to the house of God to go and knock on new doors uh, to try to get new boys and girls and men and women to come to church and, and ultimately reach all these people with the gospel uh, and so it's it, there's a lot of times there's I'll be honest with you uh, I'm human too and there's a lot of times that uh, that I don't feel like it that I would like to sleep in on Saturday and uh, or I'd like to uh, you know uh, just uh, just relax a little bit, kick back in my recliner and relax. And there's a time and a place for that. And I think everybody would make time uh, to spend time with your family and, and to, uh, to relax and to recharge your batteries. Uh, but some people, uh, some folks who, who are say they're involved in the bus ministry or have been involved in the bus ministry, uh, they say, I'm going to take a break, and then the break never ends. Uh, and so it's just it was just a flash of emotion when they felt like it. Well, now circumstances have come up, and I, I just, I'm not able to. Uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, I, I'm working overtime, so I, I just don't feel like it. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, I'm wore out. You know, Saturday's my only day off. And, and, and I hear that from a lot of people, and they'll say to the preacher, you know, you don't understand because, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to go to a job like I do. Well, one, I do understand because before I was full time in the ministry, I had a full time job and I worked six days a week and I still found a time to be able to go out on soul winning visitation. Uh, and then now that I'm a pastor, a lot of people, they think I mean, now that I'm a full time pastor, a lot of people think that, oh, well, the preacher just has every day off. No, they don't realize that really it's a seven day a week job for me and that I'm on call 24 seven. But yet I still find time 
to serve the Lord and go knock on doors uh, and to be involved in the bus ministry. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the, the excuse of, well, I don't feel like it or I'm busy or uh, I've got this or I've got that, that's, that's exactly what it is, is an excuse. And it becomes, uh, it becomes priority over God in serving him. Uh, and so if you're going to be in the bus ministry, be sold out to the bus ministry, be sold out to the Lord in the bus ministry. Uh, it's not when we feel like it. It's because those boys and girls are dependent on us. God's dependent on us to go and reach those boys and girls and men and women with the gospel and bust them into the house of God. Uh, some people they like they have the the idea of well when I'm appreciated, uh, yes I'll admit sometimes the 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 bus ministry is an underappreciated ministry, uh, and I try my best uh, because I've been in the bus ministry for 20 years uh, as as a worker and pastor and, and, and bus director and, and bus worker and bus captain uh, and and even uh, driver uh, throughout the years and and even before that as a bus rider. Uh, and so I've been in a part of the bus ministry pretty much all my life, and I do understand it is uh, a lot of times an underappreciated ministry. And I try my best as, as pastor uh, and, and having a bus ministry of our own here at the church, uh, I try my best to let the bus workers know that I appreciate them. And we try to have a bus workers, you know, appreciation time uh, at some point through the year and, and just try to encourage our bus workers uh, because they do put in a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, that, that the average church member uh, doesn't. By the way, there shouldn't be a such thing as an average church member. The average church men member should be sold out to God and involved in the ministries. Um, but yeah, sometimes the bus ministry and bus workers, they're, they're underappreciated. And I, I understand that, and I have felt that way before. But we as bus workers, those that I'm speaking to right now, those that are involved in the bus ministry, uh, we are not in it for man. I uh, want you to know that God appreciates everything that you do. Uh, and the Bible tells us to, to, to lay up treasures in heaven, to store up treasures in heaven. Uh, we're not doing this for, for, for glory, our self-glory. We're not doing this for vain glory, to get the, uh, the glory from men, uh, to be recognized by man. Uh, but we're doing this to bring glory and honor to the Lord and to win, G uh, win people to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so so uh, that shouldn't be a factor because uh, I want you to know that God appreciates everything that we do. Uh, but to, to the bus captains, uh, the bus directors, the pastors, uh, those in leadership in the bus ministry, or to convey to their workers uh, how much they appreciate what they're doing. Uh, because the average church member uh, won't go that extra mile like that. Uh, but we're not to serve based on emotions. Uh, so don't be an emotion-driven bus worker. Be a bus worker that's going to be driven by the Lord Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus came and he died, he was buried, and he rose again. He shed his blood for you. He set you free. By his grace, you're saved. It's by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. And Jesus Christ has given us that gift of salvation. We didn't earn it, and we couldn't buy it, but he freely gave it to us. And the fact that we have been born again, and our name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the fact that we have this great opportunity uh, to to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, to be an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we need to get emotion out of it. If anything, our emotions, uh, we are, are to always be excited, and, and, the, and the best way that we can be excited is to stay focused in on the fact that Jesus died for us. He was buried. He rose again, uh, and now he has given us the calling to be an ambassador for him, and that ought to stir our hearts, and we should give uh, our all uh, to, to the ministry uh, to to reach the lost with the gospel and see them get saved uh, and point them in the right direction so that they can grow spiritually, move forward, and repeat the process themselves. So don't let your emotions uh, drive you one way or the other. Make up your mind, I'm committed to this. I'm sold out to God. I'm going to be on fire for Him. I'm going to serve Him every single day. I'm going to be faithful to what God's called me to do until He calls me home. Don't let your emotions drive you like the wind. Don't be an emotional, emotion-driven bus worker. Be driven by the Lord God Almighty and the great commission that he has placed on us.